Okay, the next thing that we need to talk about with regards to bonds are some different types of bonds that exist out there. There are what's called a zero coupon bond. These bonds make no periodic interest pay payments, hence the coupon rate is zero. So you're probably asking yourself, well, if I'm going to buy a bond and it's zero coupon, I don't receive any type of coupon interest, why would I buy this bond? Well, when it comes to a zero coupon bond, these things are going to sell at a huge discount. Notice here in the third bullet point, it says that the bonds cannot sell more than par value. And in fact, they sell at huge discounts, okay? Um, for example, you can, you know, if we were to plug in um, some numbers for a discount bond, you're going to find out that you're going to buy the bond at a huge discount. So for example, let's say it carries $1,000 par value. Again, the interest, the coupon interest would be zero because the coupon interest rate is 0%. Let's say the market interest rate is 8% and let's say it has 20 years until maturity. So you buy this bond knowing that it's going to, has 20 years until maturity, until you have to wait 20 years to get a thousand bucks back. And in the meantime, you're not going to receive anything in coupon interest. So why would you buy it? Um, well, let's work out the math first and then we'll discuss. So it's a 20-year bond, 8 is the interest rate, 0 for the payment, and $1,000 for the future value. And compute FE, and you'd have to pay $214 and what was it, 45 cents, 55 cents. Okay, so why would you buy this bond? It's selling at a huge discount. You can buy it at only $214.55. And again, if you were to buy now $214.55, wait 20 years, you're going to get how much back? You're still going to get the $1,000 back. Okay, because you bought this in a secondary market transaction. And so you bought it to $1,455, you hold it until it matures, you get $1,000 back. So that's why people would buy discount bonds. Even though they're not going to get any type of coupon interest, their capital gain is going to be very large. In this case, it would be a thousand minus two hundred fourteen dollars and fifty-five cents, and that would be a fairly large capital gain. Most treasury bills and most uh, principal-only treasuries are a good example of zero coupon bonds. In addition to that, you have what's called a floating rate bond. The coupon uh, is not fixed in this case; it depends on some type of index value. Um, we have inflation-linked treasuries which changes in inflation might impact the coupon rate. Um, you know, an adjustable rate mortgage is an example of adjusting the interest rate based on changes in the market interest rate. These are not particularly very common, but they do exist. You also have what are called catastrophe bonds. These are typically issued by insurance companies. So they're issued by insurance companies to raise capital in the event of the, the major catastrophe that they have to cover. For example, when Hurricane Andrew hit, uh, I believe a lot of insurance companies issued catastrophe bonds to raise capital to um, cover payouts associated with the uh, with a hurricane. You have what are called income bonds. The income bonds only pay, I should say only pay interest when the company earns positive income. So what this basically means is that, you know, you want to buy a publicly traded company's bonds. They say that their bonds are income only bonds. So if they go through an entire calendar year and do not earn a profit, they're not going to pay interest on their bonds. So they will only pay interest to the bondholders when they go through a calendar or fiscal year and actually earn some type of positive income. Now, does that make it riskier to the bondholder? Yes, it does. And therefore, the when the company does pay its interest coupon payments, um, it's going to be fairly, fairly large. Convertible bonds allow you to convert your bonds over to shares of stock. And then put bonds uh, allow you to take a short position and that really talking about short selling goes beyond this class. So I don't really think it's important that you know too much about put bonds, but I would know catastrophe income and convertible bonds. 
again, the bond market uh, is primarily sold through what we call uh, over-the-counter transaction markets um, and telecommunication networks. Again, that's not necessarily important, but I would note that uh, there are extremely, extremely large number of bond issues, but not a whole lot of trading takes place on a daily basis for bonds. They don't trade too frequently like stocks do. And because of this, it's very difficult to get good price transparency. You may not be getting up-to-date prices, especially for small companies that issue bonds as well as municipal bonds. Treasuries are the exception. Treasury bonds are heavily invested. They are very liquid. They're huge daily trading volumes. And because of that, you are getting accurate prices. And you can go to FINRA to get up-to-date prices. And again, if you're looking at treasury quotations, this is what you would end up seeing. So what's the coupon rate on the bond? In this case, it would be 4.5%. When does the bond mature? It matures, in this case, 16 years from now in 2036. What is the bid price? What does it mean? Again, the price um, is the bid price is telling you the highest price at which you could sell. In this case, you would be able to sell at 128.0781% of par. What does the ask price mean? What does this mean? Uh, the ask price is the lowest price you can buy at, and it's currently selling at 128.1406% of par. How much did the price change from the previous day? It changed 0.7031. And then what is the yield based on the ask price? The ask yield is 2.618. Okay. And so we'll pick up the next video talking about clean versus dirty prices.